Alrighty, folks. Hey, it's been a really long time since I did a tutorial, and I'm sorry about that, but I'm going to be getting back into it. I had a lot of stuff going on. Uh, big thing was I just wasn't using any new techniques until recently, so um, these techniques here, I think, I hope are going to help you out in your world of Blender animation. So let's just go ahead and select the object I need to. So this is the sequel uh, animation to my uh, Godzilla fan film I did. And Godzilla is tracking a mysterious creature through the sky here with his atomic breath. What turtle do you know that flies by spinning through the air with jets of flame coming out of his legs? Um, I'll leave that up to you to figure that out. But um, I wanted to have a animation where he's kind of like uh, burning through these buildings. They're kind of leaving like a trail of, of uh, debris and kind of... Um, magments, you know, like uh, scorch marks into the uh, the sides of these buildings here. And so I thought, you know, I'll, I'll create like a plane and I'll create this debris emitter here. And we'll go to the, uh, oops, sorry, let's click on the actual object. There we go. And um, I just uh, created this emitter here and I went ahead under render. I just uh, set it, the type to um, render as object. Uh, I used a, um, you know, a, like a box. I just created a cube, stretched it out, and gave it like a concrete texture because I want it to look like little bits of the building are flaking off as the atomic breath hits it. And uh, I uncheck, unchecked show emitter. I don't want this uh, plane here to be visible. But what I want to do is I want to have it kind of, the particle system kind of leap from building to building. And I found out that um, it would be nice to be able to, for example, when you know, it goes from this building here and tracks over to this building, it would be nice to uh, be able to turn the particle system off when it jumps across the gap here and um, turn it back on. Now you can see here, I have it jump, I, I was able to animate it jumping across this gap in these two buildings um, very quickly. And uh, you can see the, the emitter is over here at this frame because there's uh, and then in this frame it just jumps right over. So to the eye, there's to the particle system, there's not enough time. If you animated this crossing this gap in like five to ten frames or so, you'd see the particles kind of like emitting from midair, which would look kind of weird. Um, but unfortunately, uh, long story short, uh, you know, let's say you did, for example, need to animate this thing moving across at that speed for some reason. Um, maybe the timing of your animation just won't be right. But you don't want the particle system to emit at that point in time, it would be nice if Blender had a way of turning the particle system on and off. Uh, there is no way to do it normally in, in Blender. You have to kind of do a hack. Uh, there's two ways of doing this. One is probably the worst way, which is you can animate the rendering of the particles itself. So under the particle settings right here under the particle tab, you've got these two things, which you can see it in the viewport. Or, and you can see it in the render. So you can hover your mouse over the camera icon and hit I, and you'll see it turns like a slightly salmon color. Then you could go to the frame right before you want it to turn off. You could hit I again. Then on the next frame, you can turn it off. And because you've already set some keyframes, it will animate it turning on and off. And you can see down here in the dope sheet, uh, when you see an animation that has like a straight line through it from one to another, uh, like the old flash animation timeline, uh, that means it's kind of like an on and off property. It's not like a spline thing like these. You can see these have gaps in between the keyframes means there's a spline between those. The problem with this technique is that um, when you turn off the render, the entire particle system just goes away from the render engine and you won't see, instead of it just stopping it emitting particles for a certain period of time, it will in fact just turn off all the particles. So, at this point, if you were to render it, I won't do it now because it'll take time, but believe me, I've done tests, you just won't see the particles on those frames where the rendering is turned off. So to me, this is kind of like a not a very useful uh, way of doing it. So I'm just going to hit uh, B, band select these and X and delete those keyframes. Um, so what you can do is kind of like a hack. Uh, you can add s multiple particle systems to the same object and you can just set them to start at different times. So this one for the first building here from these frames, I wanted the particles to already be emitting before the shot even occurs. So I set the in frame start frame to negative 20 and the end frame to 22. So 
as you can see there. And then um, this next particle system, I just start this uh, from 22 to 60. And uh, but of course, the only issue with this technique is, let's say you've, you've done a lot of tweaking of your system. You've got it exactly the way you want it. You don't want to have to go. You could go in, unfold every one of these, write every single value down and stuff. That's kind of a hassle. So uh, what we can do instead is um, select one of the particle systems here and just hit the plus button. You'll see that um, a new particle system shows up in the list with a, uh, a name. We gotta turn that one on. Um, a new name, but it's set to under here under the actual settings of the particle system. It's set to whatever was selected before as the default. So as you can see here, oh, nope, this is not set. This is set. Uh, I'm sorry. By default, it's set to a default particle emitter. So as you can see here, the render type is halo, not object like we have for the other ones. So what we have to do is under the drop down list. Select the original particle system that you're duplicating. All right. And now everything you can see here is now set to object. Everything is set the way it was. But now you have an exact duplicate of the original particle system. And you don't want that. If you make changes here, it's going to make changes to the, the original one, vice versa. So um, if you hit this 2 next to this, make a single user copy. So now it's its own thing. As you can see, it gave it a new name. And you should probably name these like different things to, you know, uh, make it easier for you to figure out. And so now you can set a different uh, frame, start and frame in. So we can set this uh, to end on frame 80, for example, and start on frame 61, for example. All right. And if we look at that one, yeah. So if we go back and look at our original, it has not been altered. When we change the the, oh, sorry, the start and end frame for this one. We did not update the start and end frame for the very first one. All right, so it's a hassle, um, but it's less than a hassle than doing the render thing or other stuff. Uh, like I said, there's also ways of kind of just working around it. A lot of stuff I find in in Blender is just kind of like a hack that you have to do. And um, so, like I like I showed you before, you know, really actually for this shot, the way it's it's animating, technically I could have just gotten away with just moving it uh, around. You, you the uh, flame breath is in the way they probably will not see the handoff from one particle system to another and this one here because like i said the the um the emitter object moves so quickly across this gap that there's not enough frames for the particle system to kind of spawn particles in, in midair which would look very strange you know if you did this over 10 frames 20 frames it would look extremely strange you'd see particle systems you see bricks flying out of midair which would be extremely weird um, at the end here, I just created. A, a, I, I just got tired of doing this, and I went and created a separate particle system at the very end here, because it just was a hassle to have to, uh, you know, move things around. Because remember, there's a lot of reasons why you might want to use this multiple uh, setup, mul multiple particle deal setup, because um, a lot of times the um, uh, the movement, you, it will, the particles will be inheriting the movement of the emitter object under the velocity. Uh, drop down here and so you might need to um, use a certain timing of this emitter object that you just can't escape from and, and you might have some some gap here where you need the particles to not render for a certain amount of, or not be spawned for a certain amount of time um, so that's the kind of stuff you have to do uh, also you can see here uh, there's this I created this stuff here which is this kind of like a molten scarring stuff. Of course, you can't see. Let's. I hope this doesn't mess up my screen capture software there. So as you can see here, it's gonna crawl like crazy when it uh, tries to do this in real time with the screen capture software. So as you can see here, this like kind of magma kind of comes out to show that you know it's melting the glass and the girders and everything like that. So what I did was I created a. Uh, I created um, just an object, uh, just kind of a cube, and I kept extruding it, uh, added a subdivision surface modifier to it, um, and a displacement, uh, and animate the displacement over it, and animate also the the, the em emission of the, um, you know, there's, there's an emission uh, 
shader added to this. You just animate the texture moving across it. And then uh, I added these Boolean objects to kind of these these cubes here that you see in wireframe only. Those those cubes are actually like Booleans that kind of reveal this um, this this magma stuff. And um, also I, I did uh, some shape keys. Each uh, slice of, of molten magma that um, comes out also has like a, a shape key applied that I animate it so it's kind of like coming out of the building instead of just appearing. So that way it's kind of the Boolean object acts as kind of like a wipe and the shape key kind of acts as like an extrude. So as you can see there. And then, of course, on top of that is the um, uh, emitter of uh, the debris. And, of course, then I'll add, hopefully I'll add some other uh, extra effects and stuff. And I don't know why. Sometimes I've noticed in 2.8, as you can see there, for whatever reason, I'll just have to animate this very carefully. The uh, Boolean objects sometimes will just appear for a flash. So um, you, you'll just have to get by that with um, carefully animating in a certain way, or you could just, unfortunately, just cut out that one frame, and uh, hopefully that will fix that. So that's kind of like what the shot is, a preview of what the shot is going to look like. All right, so I hope this tutorial helps you out, and there will be more stuff coming. Uh, I promise you that, and this film will hopefully be done maybe by Christmas. I hope my Christmas present to you. So happy animating.